Hi, I'm Brad Patterson, the General Manager of Mason Transit Authority in beautiful Mason County, Washington. The film you're about to see tells the story of our first 20 years and how we were formed, the challenges we have faced, and the success and growth of your public transit agency. It is a story of innovation, perseverance, and service to our community. As we look forward to our future, we thank you for joining us in celebrating our past. I hope you enjoy the show. Many a mile has gone by since Mason Transit Authority first began service in 1992. How we got started and how we got to where we are is an amazing story of people coming together to provide for the common good. Part of getting people to where they want to go. This is um, uh, this is an important thing. I mean, this is a part an important thing to tourism. It's an important thing regionally. It's an important thing if you look at a, at a map of the state of Washington, and if you've got all these bus systems, and then there's uh, and you can connect and you can get from one bus to another, and you hop on this one from to that one to that one to that to this one, and you, and you can go anywhere in the state. And imagine if there was a big hole in Mason County. And no, no, you get to there and it's just like the black hole of Calcutta. Sorry, you can't. Which, by the way, Calcutta, India, yeah, they've got buses. <laughs> we moved up on Mountain View, and I was walking to and from work every day alongside of the guardrails going up the side of Mountain View and realizing it wasn't terribly safe. There were days when getting wet and yucky and mud thrown on you from cars coming down the hill on the other side of that guardrail that I thought, you know, it'd be really neat if we had a transit system. Uh, I remember in one of our meetings, a young person coming in and a young female uh, student coming in and talking about her desire to learn and how she uh, wanted to study so long and hard at the uh, library. And that was before transit had started and she had to hitchhike home. And she brought it to the, this meeting and there's a large a group of people and they said, would you want your daughter hitchhiking late at night simply because there's no way home from the library. Public transportation was seen as a safety net in Mason County, a safety net for seniors, a safety net for people with disabilities, for children, for people that didn't have access to their own transportation. Well, it goes without question. The biggest problem was uh, convincing the large majority of the community that something could work. Even those folks that had finally uh, managed to get a favorable vote for the uh, transit system were not totally convinced that it was going to work. Did you win on the first try? No, it was the second try. It was quite interesting. We lost very closely, and I do believe that as I analyzed the vote, I determined that uh, we hadn't done enough in uh, encouraging transit in the north end of the county. And it was seen as a, a Shelton-based service, and so we went and provided additional information and talked to a lot of people up there. And, uh, I remember we even got the bear, you know who the bear is, on Hood Canal, or oh, that held the signs. <laughs> we even had the bear out putting vote yes on transit. 
In some of the areas, they would call it Shelton Transit rather than Mason Transit. And I know that it was a great deal of effort to convince the community that this was a countywide service and it was going to be there for all the people. Well, Mason County isn't frequently an early adopter uh, in terms of many things that in our community. And I think most of the early detractors were not necessarily the potential users of the system, but the folks who didn't feel like investing public resources in that kind of capital intensive activity was of public benefit. Why would we want a transit system in Mason County? We don't, we're not Seattle. You know, we don't have uh, we don't have the transportation needs that they do in Seattle and everybody has a car and if they don't have a car they should. I didn't really know anything about transit per se. I did know that I thought people were getting a, a heck of a good deal riding where they wanted to go uh, without paying anything and the taxpayers were supporting that and I didn't know if that was such a good idea or not, frankly. Why am I paying for something I don't use? Everybody was dubious about it almost. Why do you think? I don't know. That people wouldn't get out of their cars. They didn't want to give up their cars. I mean, people that were even for it said, well, it's not for me. The like people thought it was a great idea, but they, they weren't interested in participating. They never, never really were. But I heard about the fiercely independent elders and this, this group of, of, of highly opinionated um, elderly people in Union now we knew darn good and well what we were talking about. And then as soon as Mason Transit uh, had passed and it was going to be there, here's the fiercely independent elders. Okay, now we want service. Come up, you gotta come up, you gotta come up and get us. <laughs> we're, we're up here in Union, <laughs> come pick us up. We want, we want all the routes. We want, we want a, equal attention to the other parts of the county. And, um, you know, I, I think that that's uh, kind of in the character of, of this county, it's a, it's a very, um, oh, it's a county of mavericks. I remember December 2nd, 1992. So it was uh, the first Monday in December. We actually started uh, November 16th, 1992. That's when we all they, all the drivers got together, the new drivers. There was four from the contractor company and then uh, four local people that we hired as uh, part-time drivers. When they first started, there was no such thing as a route. They might be in Tahuya, out of Belfair, and get a call and say, you've got to pick up in Matlock or you've got to pick up in Olympia. And that's what the driver would do. We started out by just driving around town looking for people. Yeah, we were cruising around looking for people to pick up. And uh, I, was, I was driving down Shelton Springs Road and um, there was a couple guys walking to work. They were working at the Exceptional Foresters and I pulled over and I said, hey, you guys need a ride? And I uh, picked them up and those were my first two passengers. <laughs> first uh, year uh, was people didn't know we existed even, you know, there was uh, so actually it was funny within even up to 10 years, so people say, we got a transit in Mason County? I didn't know that. There was a gentleman in the community that uh, used to pay for advertising in the paper that said, watch the empty buses. And uh, he had stamps that he'd put on his mail that had a, a big emblem on there about watch the empty buses. And I started getting phone calls, because initially when we started, we didn't have a lot of ridership. We were trying to determine where people were going, and people slowly and gradually began to ride. And I started receiving a lot of calls saying, I'm watching these buses because this guy's putting these ads in there, and there's a lot of folks on those buses. They're really being used. And I said, I know, it's wonderful. If that man ever has a problem in being able to afford those ads, I'd, I'd help him. <laughs> There, there are times where you might see a bus that's empty, but I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, how, how often does that same guy who, who, you know, you could say, watch the empty cars. How many cars have one driver and no passengers in them? How many people are not carpooling? You know, watch the empty cars. How about that? How about that, buddy? <laughs> Do 
driving a bus was really easy for me. In the beginning, I used to pride myself on how many I could put to sleep in the afternoon with my bus ride on the way home after work. You know, 14 one day was my record, so <laughs> just by cruising down the road as gently as I could. <laughs> Me looking in that mirror, going, okay, there's another one down. You mentioned that this county is a county of mavericks. One of the things that defines them is they don't like to pay taxes. And particularly they don't like to pay taxes when they think somebody is getting a free ride. Why would people be willing in this county to part with their money for a public bus system? The objection of the free ride has gone away. They see, people are seeing that there is, a, there is an, uh, an economic advantage to doing that, to having a, a system that people can ride. If people can get employment, then, then it's good for everybody, obviously. I was a Mason County judge for several, uh, 10 years back in the mid 80s. A lot of people don't make this connection, but when you haven't got transportation and you're looking for work and you end up driving without a license, you end up then getting a suspended license and the cycle starts to develop uh, in, a, in, a, in a big way. I don't even remember the name of the number of Tim Iman's initiative that, that removed money from transit systems uh, which necessitated Mason Transit going for uh, more uh, sales tax. And I believe it was in 1999 when uh, the motor vehicle excise tax was removed and we lost virtually, well, more than 50% of our budget. At that time, there was additional funds that came in through various grant programs out of motor vehicle excise tax. So it was closer to 60 to 70% of our operating budget and a lot of services were cut back. We cut Saturday service out. It personally really hurt me when I thought about it. I heard stories from people, and we had to make that tough decision. I heard stories from people saying, well, now I can't get to work when I need to go to work because my weekend isn't the same as your weekend. Mm -hmm. How am I going to do that? I thought, well, but we have, we have this issue. We don't have a choice. Where would you have us cut it? So we cut Saturday service. Mm -hmm. and in fact, reduced hours. That's how we could try to save money. That was one of the probably driving forces, key force, if you will, for um, going to the public and saying we need to continue to prepay transit for good times and bad times and the best way we know how to do this is tax ourselves. If the people are willing to willing to tax themselves to keep something they want mm -hmm. running that's exactly what uh, local governments want. They want to see whether you really mean it or not. One of the things that we benefited from during that time is we had a pretty active uh, volunteer group uh, within transit. McTab was pretty active. McTab, it's known as Mason County Transit Advisory Board. I call them the Knights in Shining Buses because they went basically from place to place uh, letting people know how important it was to have transit. 
Indeed, voters approved a tax increase for public transit. And as the millennium turned, the wheels of Mason Transit were set in motion for a decade of expanded services. New routes were added as demand steadily grew. In fact, Mason Transit has grown its ridership almost a thousand-fold, from a yearly average of 60,000 to nearly 580,000 rides in 2012. Well, first of all, I think Mason County is going to continue to grow, uh, and where there's growth, there's opportunity for uh, continued growth for the entities that uh, support it in services. And so I, I think the future for the MTA is fine, because again, I believe it has the confidence of the community it serves, um, and uh, it's, it's well-managed, it's well-run. In 2005, we purchased our own facility, creating a state-of-the-art maintenance and repair shop as well as our own fueling station. I think we're saving about a, you know, a dollar a gallon off the retail price on diesel. And Mason Transit was, I believe, the first transit operation nationwide to partnership with, with the school system. Uh, school bus drivers became MTA employees for that period of time. You know, there was national recognition coming out of that. Um, again, back to Dave O'Connell, um, it wasn't the first time he was nationally recognized for anything. I mean, um, the guy was amazing. He's, he, you know, testified before Senate and Congress and uh, been to D.C. many times. And, um, you know, later in his career, he was nominated and selected as a Community Transportation Association GM of the Year, which was quite a deal. This is an organization I think it's easy to feel uh, committed to because it, it provides a real important uh, function, I think, for the quality of life for so many people. Fuel checked, fluid checked, fueled and cleaned the bus, and then we'll give her that fresh bus. And if you look at the exhaust coming out the back, you'll notice all the, all the tailpipes are clean, no, no carbon. Always I try to do better, you know. Uh -huh. If I do something today, tomorrow I'm going to try to do just a little bit more better. I try to treat the people like uh, I like the people treat me, you know. And I think that makes for a nice ride for the passengers when the people that are serving them are enjoying themselves. When it comes to quality service, sometimes the stop is as important as the ride. I wake up at 1.45 every day, and then when I get there, you know, they're not always morning people, but I get to know their personalities, you know, what they'll like. I'll think of a song I think that would make them happy, and I'll play it for them. I've, I've had my drivers dancing in the office on occasion in the morning. <laughs> Buenos dias, en que la puede ayudar? Mason Transit Authority, this is April. We share information from agency to agency. All right, I'll go ahead and transfer you now. It's great because we can call another transit agency and say, we're having this issue. How, how are you dealing with this? What's your policy? And right away they'll email it over or say, this is what we do, this is how we do it, and this is how we came to come to this policy. This is what our learning lessons were. And so that enables us to, at times, learn from other people's mistakes and implement those within our agency before those mistakes happen. It allows us to be proactive and it allows us to um, really utilize our resources well. Transportation and communication are, 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 are the, uh, you know, the heart of the community and the, the pulse that makes things work. It's really gratifying to be able to still uh, allow uh, elderly people, some with minor disabilities and things like that, their independence to still stay in their own home that they've lived in for 40 years or something like that. A lot of these uh, seniors that we take shopping, you know, they're always saying if it wasn't for the transit, they couldn't uh, couldn't get in, do the shopping, couldn't make their doctor's appointments. I mean, they love it. It was not uncommon that we would transport somebody that said, you know, I voted against the transit, 
but now that I need it, I am very glad that we have it. You guys are great, I love you. <laughs> we now go into our third decade of public service. We also continue our reputation as one of the most innovative public transit authorities in the United States. And we are building new partnerships with the Skokomish Tribal Nation, the Squaxin Island Tribe, and countless governmental and nonprofit agencies. And to maximize our community resources, we're establishing a multi-use transit community center in downtown Shelton. And I remember coming, you know, to the to the armory and stuff for events. I think it's fabulous. I think it's um, it serves the community by preserving a building that everybody is familiar with. Once again, it's part of the fabric of the community. We're providing a, a the, the buses are going to operate from here. This is going to be a hub that they're going to do, and we're and in the process we're changing this this entire neighborhood down here. I think for the better. Having the strength uh, to pull everybody together makes us all stronger. The road may not always be straight, but the ride will always be safe, efficient, and enjoyable when one is riding with Mason Transit.